Super 100. Pump up your performance. The hills around Sabi echoed with the sound of high-powered machinery last Friday as South Africa's rally fraternity prepared for the start of the fourth national event of the season, the Sassol Rally. 59 cars in total had entered this event, of which 53 would make the start. All eyes looked to the top of the championship log and the drivers who have come to Sabi to do battle for those valuable points. Chart von der Walt and Cindy Harding currently head the log, with Jan Habich, the first of the Class A contenders, some eight points behind. On 57 points, just four points behind Habich, are Hannes Krobler and the current champion, Serge Damso. Um, I said it's very interesting to see Jan Habich. Uh, it's got a first and a second, and uh, Hannes and myself have got first and a third. So this event might be, you know, deciding the changes of the championship points. Now you're in your new car, you're confident that that's been shaken down okay? Yes, we've done a bit of testing yesterday and the day before and everything seems to be very good and the car is actually well put together and everything seems to work very well. You're obviously going for championship points here. For sure and uh, you know if we can win the championship and win another few rallies then you've got something to put on the table and uh, the end of the year is coming, the budget is coming so we have to talk to the guys and if we can do have good results to put on the table I think that'll help a lot. The draw for the 1994 Sassol Rally was an interesting one. Of the top seeds, Enzo Kuhn drew his Sassol Ford Laser into the number one position on the starters list. The dry conditions and the resulting dust factor make the starting order vital. Being number one on the road is, is a, an assistance, but specifically at night time. During the day, the wind blows, there's not any dust, but at night time, um, there will be dust tonight. So the first car that leads into the night will have a very significant advantage. Problem being, after five stages, there is a regroup. And so the first five stages of this rally are absolutely critical to be leading after five stages. We're all very much on the same pace. And I think we'll start this event on one of the fastest paces this year. It's always been a sprint event, and it will definitely be one today. So the scene is set for one of the most exciting two-day rally events of the season. And as the AA Motorsport flag is lifted from the Sassol Ford, Enzo and Guy officially start the 1994 Sassol Rally. Behind them, 52 anxious competitors await their own starting orders. Hannes Krobler and Martin Buerter, confident after their recent win on the Castrol International Rally, start the Sassol as the second car on the road. Into stage one, a short 1.8 kilometer section close to the center of Sabi and a chance for the local folk to see the cars in action. Two minutes behind the Ford, Hannes follows Enzo through the stage, the dust gap already proving to be inadequate in places where the air is still. The spectators, it seems, are willing to brave the dust, and the spectacle is well worth it. All the Class A crews know that the pace is to be fast, and that every second lost will be almost impossible to get back. Surge powers the Toyota through the stage under the instructions of navigator Vito Bonafidi. The crew set a winning time of 1 minute and 41 seconds. Jan Habich and Douglas Judd clock in a time 3 seconds slower than Surge, getting a taste of the pace being set up front. Robler's teammate Nuna de Cunha in the second BP Bank in Centra finds himself in a one-on-one -on -one battle with fellow Portuguese driver Elisio Miranda. Alessio has challenged Nuno with a sign on his rear window saying, catch me if you can, De Cunha, and the fight for Portuguese honor is on. Brady Dabner and Neil Watts have made the journey from the Cape to contest Class B on the Sassel Rally. The team are currently fifth on the championship log, well clear of any Class B competition. Their competition on this event, however, comes from Leon Buerta and Jeff Tyra, and Brian Loopstra with Dave McGregor. of Kutzer and Franz Bosov in their Class S Ford Sapphire already suffering body damage. Into stage three and a look at the race up front. Serge and Vito have already stamped their authority on the opening stages, winning stage one ahead of Enzo Kuhn and stage two by 10 seconds ahead of Jan Habich. The Toyota crew win this stage by 16 seconds. Bringing up the second phase of the Class A attack are Nuno de Cunha and Alessio Miranda who are both off the pace, but have only four seconds between them. The Class C competition looks to be fierce, with four crews that could do well. Peter Altersky has lost ground to the rest, 
but the coup to beat in Class C will be the current championship leaders, Chart von der Bolt and Cindy Harding. Glenn Derman and Dave Levkovitz are back in action in the radio unit's Toyota Conquest after a bout of pneumonia had sidelined Glenn and kept the crew from the Nationals. Erchen Fecken and Neil Foree move up to complete the Class C fight after the Lawrence and Paisley Conquest stopped in Stage 2. After a good effort in the Castrol, Luopstra and McGregor continue showing form and move steadily up the field. By mid-afternoon, the dust conditions worsened as the noonday breeze disappeared. Serge took full advantage of the Ford crew's mistake when Enzo and Guy wrong-slotted in the open section between stages three and four. Booking into the stage first gave Serge and Vito the dust advantage, which was now starting to tell. Serge's new car was performing well, but small teething problems were starting to appear. Serge could only tie the stage with Enzo Kuhn, who appeared out of the Toyota's dust, now in second position on the road. Jan Habich and Douglas Judd won the stage in a time of 4 minutes and 43 seconds, keeping their second place secure from Enzo and Guy in the Sassel Ford Laser. Grobler and Buerta retired in the stage with a broken fuel tank. On stage 5, the Habich Synchro broke the front diff, losing the Stanbrick team 18 seconds on stage time and some frantic work at the regroup. For the Toyota and Ford crews, it was the basics of fitting lights for the night stages and keeping the sponsor's stickers visible from under the dust. Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi held a 52-second lead from Habich and Judd, who, despite losing time on Stage 5, were able to stay just seven seconds ahead of the Ford. Class C had just five seconds separating von der Bolt from Dermann, who held fourth and fifth positions, respectively. The Toyota crew have earned the right to lead the 47 remaining cars into the dusty night stages, from which most will be just happy to emerge unscathed. On stage seven, the Toyota team lost 34 seconds when the Conquest went off the road and Serge was unable to engage reverse gear. With the help of Vito pushing, Serge got the car going and managed to hang on to a very slender lead. Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson attacked the night stages with a second place of Habich and Judd firmly in their sights. They won stages seven and eight, lost time on nine, but won stage 10 convincingly by nine seconds. With team manager Saro von Amerva there to guide him, Enzo made the most of the dusty conditions, taking 22 seconds off Jan Habich, who played safe and backed off the pace, determined to complete the stages that would take the cars back to Nelspreit for the overnight stop. By morning, the field had been reduced to 37 cars. Most of the class leaders made it through the night, with the backmarkers taking the biggest knock in retirements. On the scoreboard, Enzo and Guy moved the Sassol Ford into second place. Nuno and Elisio have broken away from the lower classes and continue to engage in their private battle. Ten seconds separate the two teams. Serge and Vito, despite their problems, still lead the Sassel rally. We had a few problems with the gearbox, uh, third gear jumping out and uh, somehow we lost reverse gear. So we lost a bit of time. We overshot twice and of course uh, Vito had to get out and push the car. So we lost a bit of a, about a minute during the night, you know, it was a pity because we could have opened the gap because we had a dust advantage. So anyway, we'll see what happens today. Now the stages do start stretching out today. They're a little bit longer than some were last night. Is your front advantage or being in front going to be an advantage still? I don't think so. During the day is not a problem, you know, the, this is a slight reason, but uh, definitely a night is advantage over so number one. And your game plan, is your gearbox fixed and are you going to go for it now? Yes, uh, we replaced the gearbox last night, so everything seems to be fine now, so it should be a good day today. The Toyota pulls away from the start control, confident of building on their lead over the 11 stages ahead. Behind them, Enzo and Guy will have their hands full, fighting off Habich and Judd, who will no doubt spend the day trying to get their second place back. I'll definitely fight to keep it. I think um, it'll be difficult catching Serge, but uh, we'll be on there trying to put the pressure on him. And uh, then also look at Yanni. He's, he's very fast in, in this event, and um, we'll have to keep an eye on him, but obviously try and stay on the road. Are you happy with your performance last night? I mean, conditions were pretty difficult. I think so, you know, it's very difficult. It's very easy to make a mistake in the dust, and I thought I'd rather play it a bit safe stay on the road and uh, wait for the daylight and uh, a bit uh, clearer road. After a short task stage in Nelspreit, the crews moved back into the forest area near White River. 
Serge immediately throws down the hammer, completing the 6.4 kilometer stage in just four minutes and six seconds. Enzo stays on the pace, losing just four seconds to the flying Toyota crew. A sense of urgency hangs over the service areas. The service teams outside the car as anxious as the drivers and navigators in them. Habich shows his intentions with a spectacular driving display through stage 12. The pace is so hot that despite his extended effort, the golf synchro can only match the time set by Serge of 4 minutes and 6 seconds. On stage 14, the roads open up and the cars can stretch their legs as the speeds are pushed to beyond the 200 km mark. Just as suddenly, the road narrows and the winding forest pass demands a more sedate pace. Serge, intent on staying alive, obliges. Enzo is visibly faster on these sections and navigator Guy Hodgson must be hard pressed to ignore the drop off to his right. Behind the front trio, De Cunha and Rulliard chase hard to extend the 10 second lead on Miranda and Pretorius, having scored identical times on stage 12. The ex Mozambican De Cunha is locked in a battle for honour against the Portuguese mainlander Miranda. The golf crew goes on to win stage 13 by 5 seconds. The pace in classes B and C is as intense. Charles van der Valt must push his Class C golf to the limits in an effort to keep the charging Toyota of Derman and Levkovitz at bay. Brian Loopstra and Dave McGregor started the day well ahead of their Class B opposition, Brady Dabner and Leon Buerta. Dabner's early morning times started to whittle away at the Opel's lead and Loopstra was forced to respond on stages 13 and 14 as the Cape Tonians applied the pressure from behind. The effect of the pressure started to tell and on stage 15 we caught Loopstra in his Opel driving way over the limit and pushing themselves far too hard. While behind them, things were not going well for Brady Dabner and Neil Watt. We joined the crew in car on stage 15. So ended the fight for class B. Get up. No, I can't get up this time. Oblivious of the situation behind them, the Opal continues at an unnecessarily quick pace and are lucky to complete the stage unscathed. The fight for Class C ended towards the end of stage 14 when Chart and Cindy left the road and were unable to continue. This promotes Herren Fecken and Neil Fury into second place in Class C, but a full two minutes behind the leading radio units car. Peter Altersky and Alan Bissett move up to third place in this class. Leon Buerta and Jeff Tyra move up a place in Class B and overall as they pass the stricken Dabner and Watt on the stage. Tiras Fulyun and Warren Wakem lead Class D in their Uno, ahead of Kurs Ruas and Irma Kutzer, who trail by just under a minute. Habich and Judd enter stage 15 late, while the leading Toyota of Damso and Bonafidi is nowhere to be seen at all. We caught up with Habich and Judd a few minutes later at the Sabi regroup. What's, what's the problem? We see you late on the road. OK, we've, um, we went off the road on an open section behind a spectator in the dust and uh, did quite a bit of damage to the left front suspension. Uh, so what stage was that on? Do you, can you remember? Uh, between 13 and 14. Uh, so we're just battling to get the thing lined up again. Um, but I suppose we're still going, so we shouldn't complain. So you didn't actually lose time in a stage? No, not really. No, not really. But has it slowed you down in the stages? It has, because the handling is not, is not what it should be, and we're battling a bit with it. 
word comes through that the Damso conquest has suffered permanent diff failure, leaving the Ford and the Golf to fight it out alone. Just 21 seconds separate them, with 12 seconds between Miranda and De Cunha, and just five stages remaining. Hubbock's 21 seconds behind us, so we'll, we can't relax. And um, it's a pity that Serge fell out. We were having a good race with him. But uh, really, he's far from finished, so we've got five stages, and so we have to concentrate hard and keep it on the road. Just before the restart, Vito Bonafidi confirmed the Toyota's retirement. Something broke in the drivetrain, and we thought it was a half shaft at the back that had broken, and we lost about a half a minute, although still in the lead at the end of 14. They then jacked the car up and found that the front drive shaft had broken, and unfortunately, there's a little piece of metal in the at the end of the shaft where it broke, where it broke off. It remained in the front diff. Uh, we've never changed the front diff before, and we just gave it an attempt, and it just took us too long. Enzo and Guy leave Sabi with a narrow lead, but a huge task. Behind them, the earlier struggle for class honour has withered, with a sudden absence of Dabner in class B and von Avolt in class C. It's a hell of a pity that chart went off the road, because we were really just getting a good dice together there. And um, But that's the name of the game, you know, a bit of pressure and a mistake. Could have been us, could have been him. Fortunately for us, we're now in the lead. And we've got a substantial lead over the next class, guys, so we'll just take it easy to the end, but finish for sure, yeah. For the big bangers, it's back to 110%, with a Sassol honour at stake for Enzo and valuable championship points up for grabs by Jan. The route back to the finish at Nelspruit is by no means less demanding, and Loopstra and McGregor crash out of contention on stage 18, ending their chances of an almost certain Class B win. On stage 19, Enzo and Guy take extra servicing time, letting Hawick and Judd lead into the stages and forcing the golf crew to set the pace. As the road conditions change, so the drivers have to adapt instantly. A mistake now, and all will be lost with just two stages remaining. The unforgiving rivalry through the entire duration of the rally has the gulf of Miranda and Pretorius sounding like a bucket full of bolts. Sounding better than the gulf, but still trailing it on score, the centre of De Cunha and Rulliard fails to match its times. Glenn Derman and Dave Levkovitz keep up an unnecessarily fast pace as they head for an almost certain Class C victory. Leon Boerter and Jeff Tyra having inherited the Class B lead from the luckless Loebstra and McGregor. Also out of luck, Elisio Miranda and Francois Pretorius found walking out of the penultimate stage. We, you know, we've been having this sort of rally long dice with Nuno that you guys are well aware of that everybody's been looking at. And uh, then we're going along and the lower control arm broke and poor Elisa had his hands full of motor car that had two front wheels going in different directions and eventually stopped against the bank and that was it. There's nothing you can do. Enzo Kim broke two records last weekend. He gave his sponsors, Sassel and Ford, their third win in a row on the Sassel Rally, and he became the youngest driver to win a national event, beating Sara von Amerva's record set exactly 20 years ago. It's a great feeling. It's nothing like sweet taste of victory, and uh, we had an incredible dice with uh, Janni Abich towards the end. He was really flying, and he kept us on our toes. It was difficult to pace ourselves. We didn't want to go too fast and make a mistake, but we couldn't relax completely because he was still pushing. So, uh, excellent finish, nice event, and I'm so happy to do it for Sassel. Uh, it's a hat-trick for them, and um, I'm as happy as they are. Well, congratulations. Everybody said Sol is going to be a hard act to follow when he did it last year, and you've managed, so that's great. Oh, no, he's Sadl, I must mention the Sadl's been incredibly supportive throughout the event. He's carried my baggage, he's booked me into hotels, he's looked after me like his own kid. And uh, I really must thank him for that. It's, it's incredible the support I've gotten from him uh, morally and in, in every possible way. He's led the team through this event. It's, it's magnificent to see a guy like that really put in effort into a small team and something where he's probably got nothing to gain.